Welcome to the first RYP TV Q&A. In this video, I'm going to answer your questions, but instead of just sitting here, I'm going to go for a ride. So, I'm going to try to read a question and then answer it while riding, because that's better than looking at my face the whole time, right? I hope so. Can't promise the section will be that, that awesome, but it should be entertaining. The first question is, what's your typical training session and how did you get your riding to the next level? Well, my typical training session really depends on what time of year it is. If, if it's in the season, I like to focus on sections. So I'll come out here and put together six really tough sections, ride them three times. If I clean them, then I move on. If not, then I ride them until I clean them. And if there's a certain move I feel I need work on, then I'll work on that after the sections. But that's the most common way I do my training sessions. If it's not right before the season, I'll, I'll do a few less sections. And a little more just fun riding, working on different techniques and certain things I need to improve on. And then also just have some fun, find some back tire lines, that sort of thing. And I took my riding to the next level by practicing a lot. That's really all you can do. It all comes down to you and how much you want to get better. It takes so much time, so much effort, so much repetition that nothing can uh, replace time on the bike and learning the right way. So it's very helpful to have somebody that knows what they're doing when you're first learning, but once you have the basic techniques down, it's just a lot of learning yourself and seeing what works for you, riding with other people and trying to figure out what they're doing wrong, what they're doing better than you, and learning from that. How much does the freestyle practice and tricks help you in the competition? That's an interesting one. I would say very little as far as technical ability goes, but it is time on the bike and it keeps me having fun and keeps me wanting to ride and, and do different things. So I think that's the most important part of it. That sort of thing can help as far as balance goes, but the techniques themselves, not that useful. Once in a while I'll have to hold a wheelie somewhere or ride a nose wheelie before a drop and that helps but other than that it's just about the fun. It keeps me on the bike and challenges me in different ways so I'd say that's the most valuable part of it. I also think it helps get new people interested in the sport because they see that and think it's more of a BMX style and something that might interest them a little bit more than the really technical side of it. I find it a little bit difficult to practice the zap coordination. Could you share a secret or tip? Well, I actually just did a full how-to video and it will be on the next issue of On The Pegs, the November issue, so that will go in depth on how to do a zap from Actually, it was right here, starting small, all the way up to that one, which is quite big, but I'd say the biggest thing is the timing and where you put your front tire. Most people put their front tire too high and don't get much rebound, so you really want to set it into the face of the obstacle, and that will compress both suspensions, and then it compresses, and once it rebounds, that's when you pop the clutch, give it some gas, and jump. That's what makes the rear tire lift to the top where your front tire was. And like everything else, it just takes a lot of repetition until you can go pretty big with it. Give new and old riders the procedure of suspension settings and how I prep my bikes. I actually did a suspension setting video in the spring. So I will put a link to it up here. And that goes through what I change on my suspension. It is not much, so you might be surprised but the stock bike is very good. I hardly do anything to it. All I do to prep it is put S3 handlebars, grips, bar ends, foot pegs, 
and a few clicks to the suspension and it's good to go. And of course, I maintain them by keeping things tight, changing the oil, changing the air filter, using maximum oils, of course. I don't have it on right now, but I ran the CSP skid plate with the optional teeth all year on my practice bike and competition bike, and that was a good uh, upgrade from stock. Do you have an exercise program off the bikes? If so, what is it? If you mean off of all bikes, then it's pretty limited. I don't do a whole lot, but I do a little bit just about every day. And that involves stretching, a little bit of yoga, and some core exercises. Basically just to keep my core muscles strong since I've had back problems. Basically focus on the, the ab muscles and the back muscles and that just keeps my back from hurting too much and too often. Being married to a personal trainer definitely has its benefits. When I do need some workouts off the bike, she can take care of that. And in the winter, I definitely do more. I'll do some rowing and some different things with some light weights. You'd have to ask my wife what they're called though, because I don't, I don't really know. As you've gotten older, do you still have any rituals, like two different colored socks or not tucking in your jersey? Well, I have had to go away from two different colored socks. I used to do blue on the left, red on the right, because that's how Charles was. The ribbon was that color, and I just thought it made sense. But now, the ribbon's all white and my socks are all blue. So, that's all I can do. But I've definitely stuck with not tucking my jersey in. I always had issues with it coming untucked in the past. And we're talking like back to 06. And then when I started to just ride without it tucked in, I started to do much better. So it's been in my head that that just makes me ride a little bit, ride with a little bit more flow and ride looser. And I guess that's why I do it and why I've stuck to it. Will you ever try the Scottish Six Day Trial? Well, here's my Scotland practice right here. Little homemade creek. I really haven't decided what I think about the Scottish. Uh, I think it's pretty amazing how long they ride the bikes each day, how many sections there are, and how low scoring it ends up being it's pretty impressive but for me I can't decide if it just sounds like torture or sounds like a good time maybe a bit of both I honestly haven't thought too strongly about it at least enough to put the plan in place so I guess there's a chance but it's kind of slim. The sections definitely would not suit my style, but I think it would be good for me as a rider to do it and force myself to practice that. How much time, days in a week, do you practice? Again, it depends on what time of year it is. If it's in the season, I'm probably five to six times a week. Off season, I might cut it down to four or five some weeks, but then once in a while, I'll take a break where I might only ride once in a week just to get refreshed again and keep from getting burnt out. Because when I was younger, I rode every day pretty much no matter what. And if I'm at home, it typically takes me about an hour and a half to two and a half hours to get my six sections in. Sometimes more, sometimes less. And when I go somewhere else besides my house, probably usually about double that. This area isn't that big and it's awesome, but I do get bored of it once in a while, so it's good to go somewhere else and 
I can get burnt out just riding here all the time. So quality over quantity when I'm home, I'd say. And I try to make the most of it when I go somewhere. But I also never really time my rides. Don't always look at the clock, so that could be a little bit off there. Usually just ride until I feel like I've gained something or gotten a good workout in, feel good about it, then move on to the next day. <sighs> this is hard. What is the best way to practice jumping on the rear wheel? I learned on a nice mellow hill, something like this, just started by doing wheelies and trying to hop in the wheelie. Not even, at first, not even worried about the clutch or the brake. Hardly even the throttle, just pull a wheelie and try to pogo stick on the rear tire using the shock. And then once you get the feel of that, start bringing the clutch into it. Popping the clutch, giving it some throttle and jumping. It's nice on the hill because you don't need to use the rear brake, but it is very helpful. You can't really do it much on the flat ground without it. So once you get used to that, start bringing in the rear brake, trying to land with a dead stop. Hop again and again and again. And just like anything, it's repetition. Practice, 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 practice until you get the feel of it. But maybe I'll have to do a more in-depth video in the future on that one. Uh, here's a funny one. Do you think Jeff Aaron is scared yet? I think Jeff is one of the coolest guys I know in trials. I've always had a great relationship with him. And nothing but good things to say, so. I hope it stays that way. I hope he's not too bummed that we're tied now. I really don't think he is because he knows nobody can take away what he's done. And yeah, 10 championships is pretty amazing in any sport. So he's someone I always looked up to and never thought I'd get anywhere near him. So it's pretty awesome to be on the same level as him and compared in the same sentence. Or maybe he's planning a comeback and coming back to win next year. Need tips on holding pressure? Well, it's not really a question, and it is probably something that's going to be covered in a future video. I'm gonna do some more how-tos, but I'll go over something real quick here. This isn't the best thing to learn, but it'll get the point across. You wanna find something that's kinda nice and flat on the backside and angled a bit, and then something that you're not gonna go over the bars on. You're just trying to wheelie up slow and take a little time to hold the front wheel up and control the set it down where you want to. And to do that, you just want to keep your body weight back when you hit it and a little bit of throttle and then start slipping the clutch on top so you can controllably bring it back down. If you start looping out, grab the rear brake. If the front end starts to drop before you want to, grab the clutch out, give it a little gas and just practice doing that quite a lot and then hopefully it will transition into stuff like this where you're zapping up onto something holding the front tire up and setting it down exactly where you want it not a great how-to there but it's something right next one here is asking about diet day of and day before a trial the night before a trial I like to have a big meal pretty much always go to pasta and then my morning of, it's kind of a weird meal, but it works for me. I like to have some chocolate milk with a peanut butter, banana, and honey toasted sandwich. And then usually three eggs. And besides that, on the day of, I'll just have a banana before each loop. And that's pretty much all there is to it. I just drink a lot of water the entire week before and during. When you aren't out competing, how often are you training? It's kind of similar to a couple of the other questions, but it depends what you consider training. <laughs> training on the motorcycle during the season, typically five to six times a week. And sometimes you can't do that. Sometimes you're traveling too much, driving too long, and can't do it but and sometimes you need a little break but that's pretty normal to be riding that much and then I do something just about every day that I would consider cross training and something that 
It may sound kind of weird, but to me, every bit I do helps, whether it's uh, mountain biking, bicycle trials, unicycling. Heck, I even think driving an RC car can help your coordination and be considered cross training. So I like to mix it up, have a lot of fun. And during the off season, I will train a little bit less on the trials bike and do a little bit more of the other fun stuff. Just to keep it fun, mix it up, and keep me wanting to go back to the trials bike. And even uh, missing it a little bit is good. Once in a while, you take a long enough break to just really be itching to ride, I think is really helpful. There's another one here about the Scottish Six Day, which we went over, and then one about the Scott. I think the Scott is a really cool event and something I wouldn't be interested in. But Scotland's far away. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the travel overseas. And for one event, it's a big effort. I don't know if that'll ever happen, but I don't know. I think it'd be cool to have one in the States too. Wouldn't be quite as famous or, or as good, maybe, but still be a lot of fun and a mix up from the normal events we always do. Uh, not sure where I'm going here. This guy says he has a pair of CD Sport 01 boots from November that are falling apart and wonders if I can recommend a pair of hard wearing trials boots. I've been wearing Garnets for a very, very long time and I've always liked them. They last long enough for me and I, I put a lot of time in them, that's for sure. I would typically keep them nice for the competitions, just use them then and then uh, they become my practice boots for the next year and that cycle always worked really well for me. But I will say that we might have some news coming in that department soon, so be on the lookout for RYP for possibly the best boots yet. Who do you see coming up as the next big thing in North America? Well, I don't have to look far to see some really great riders with a lot of potential that are very young. Um, and they're actually on my team. I'd say Josh Roper and Alex Myers are the next threats for sure. They had a great battle in expert class this year and really impressed me, so I'm excited to see how far they can take it. And then a little bit younger, but not far off in skill, we have Will Myers, just 13 this year, riding Expert 125 and really riding well. So I'm really excited, hoping he sticks with it and keeps pushing and maybe he can, uh, oh, maybe he can make a run at Europe also. Two or three, about going back to Europe and what's stopping me from riding trial two or trial GP. Yeah, I kind of expected that one. Whoops, maybe that's what's stopping me. Crash too much. Well, I could go on and on about that subject. There's a lot of reasons why I don't. But I'd say the main one is that I've just given up that dream, that goal. It's just not there for me anymore. When I was 16, 17, pretty much till I was 19, that's all I wanted to do, that's all I cared about. And I gave it a shot by going to Europe. Had some decent results in the lower classes, but I realized I wasn't gonna be able to live there. And that's what it takes to be competitive with them. So I just decided that was it. It wasn't for me. I'm gonna stay in the States and do as much as I can here. And I've been having a lot of fun doing it. I have great support and I love riding with everybody. So Charles isn't just about the competition, how good I do about all the little things too so I just thought I'd have a better happier life here and that's what I'm trying to keep telling myself I guess plus I'm just not on their level the red line is 
too difficult for me. I'd be crashing all over the place. It costs a lot of money, a lot of time from a lot of different people to, to do that and I just couldn't keep doing it. Not just to myself, but to everybody that was supporting me. So decided to give, give up that dream and just stay home and enjoy living and riding with everybody in the States. I'm just not on their level, it's too late for me now. I miss too much by not being there the last 10 years and they have pulled ahead greatly. But I do really appreciate people thinking that I can compete on that level. Uh, those riders are amazing and I would be honored just to compete against them and, and uh, not die. And the trial two class sections look really challenging to me, but would be more my level. But again, there's just not much in it for me to do that. It would definitely help me as a rider. Like I said, I'm really happy riding here in the States, so probably just gonna keep that going for a while. And then don't get me started on no stop. I just don't like it, and I'll leave it at that. Here's one kind of on the same lines as that. How would you rate yourself against the likes of Bo, Raga, and so on? I would rate myself far below those guys. Like, uh, if I had to put a number on it, maybe, maybe I'm 60% of the rider they are. Those guys are so incredible. They're amazing what they do, and I am nowhere near them. Whoops. See? I was trying to go up there, and I went down here. They would go up there. And then laugh how easy it was. They put in the work, and it shows. I do my best I can here, but it's just not enough. You really gotta live with them, compete with them, train with them, if you wanna be as good as them, so. I made, this, made the decision I wasn't gonna do that, and definitely fell behind the curve. But all those guys, everybody that rides that line, super incredible riders. I have so much respect for all of them. And I love just watching them ride. So keep it up, guys. You're really good. Would you consider hard enduro? Hmm. Hard enduro is definitely interesting. There's so many trials guys that have found so much success in it that people would think I'd be good at it. But then I remember, I don't really like going fast. I think with the right circumstances, I would give it a try, but those have not come my way yet. And I wouldn't be surprised if they never do. It's not something I'm pushing to try to do, so I doubt anything will happen with it, but if the right opportunity comes up, maybe, maybe I give it a shot. Last question, all right. What was the hardest and or scariest section you've ever seen in competition? Huh, that's a good one. I'll have to think about that for a minute here. It was probably one of those in Tennessee when I rode the world around, rode the red line, and had a lot of crashes. I don't remember too many specifically, but I remember having a lot of points and a lot of struggles. And I really tried not to stop. I think that was the first year of no stop rules. And that was one of the few to really follow that to the T and just never even hesitate. And that caused a lot of points and a lot of hard sections. The scariest section is even more difficult to come up with. I really try to keep myself from getting too scared while riding because that really brings your confidence down. And uh, confidence is huge. So is balance, which I can't find right now. But there was one in Colorado in 2016. It was section 12 on Sunday, so last section of that year actually. My 
my confidence was not at its peak that's for sure there was this long rocky climb just way up this hill without much of a run really loose takeoff and everything i just did not see a way i was going to make it being the last section last event of the year and it was an early year too and i was just thinking about getting hurt and you let that get in your head and it's not going to be good so i was able to block it out and actually cleaned it i think the first loop which was really surprising probably one of my best rides of that year really but then that day came down to that section i needed to get a three in it my final loop and i would have won the day but i ended up five in it and getting second so kind of a bummer way to end of the year but i did use that for motivation for the next year and it did me some good there so everything happens for a reason i guess all right that's going to do it for this q a thank you for watching and i hope that answered some questions i know it was a little bit more difficult than i expected trying to ride and talk i feel like i may have missed some points but any more questions just ask maybe we'll do some more of these in the future with some other riders so let me know what you think in the comments Thank <laughs> you.